Yeah. And then Arizona State. I mentioned this is a big time trap game in my opinion for the Ducks. And Arizona State and Oregon have had some classic battles the past few years. Last year, Arizona State lost by just two points to the Ducks. In 2017, Arizona State beat Oregon by two points. And then in 2015, Arizona State lost in three overtimes to Oregon. So these guys have had some classic games over the past few years. And I think Arizona State wins this game in another classic. The desert is a very difficult place to play. We have seen that uh, over the past few years. We saw that last year under Herm Edwards, who did better than everybody thought that he would. And his signature win last year came against Michigan State in Week 2. His signature win in 2019 comes at the very end of the season against Oregon. I believe Arizona State, with a lot of those returning starters, and Eno Benjamin at running back, uh, thrashes this Oregon defense and gets a big-time win. Oregon falls to Arizona State, could ruin their college football playoff hopes, and could ruin their big Pac-12 title hopes. Man, that beard was pretty bad, but the prediction was pretty good. Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, bringing you some of the best college football news, predictions, and analysis. Make sure to like this video and check out everything in the description below for some exclusive college football news and offers. Well, as we said all last week, week 13 was not supposed to be a very eventful week. But of course, it was. And if this week taught us anything, it was to assume nothing. That anything is possible on any given Saturday. And unfortunately, as you saw at the beginning of this video, the Oregon Ducks found, out, found that out the hard way. The six ranked Ducks, prime college football playoff contenders, maybe just a Pac-12 championship win away from making the Final Four, were upset in the desert by Herm Edwards and the Arizona State Sun Devils, 31-28. Primetime ABC, we mentioned the desert, a very difficult place to play. This game for Oregon just felt like a major trap game. And the Sun Devils answered the call and proved everybody right that thought it was. Jaden Daniels going off for a career-high 408 yards and three touchdowns against a very solid Oregon defense. Keep in mind, guys, Jaden Daniels, just a true freshman for Arizona State. Eno Benjamin, while he may not have been the biggest playmaker in this game like we thought he was going to be back in the summer, he still added 114 yards on the ground. And you got to give credit to Oregon where it's due. While they did lose this game, you look at the score, especially look at the box score, play-by-play, play, Arizona State found themselves up 24-7 to with a little over 8 minutes left, 8.42 remaining. So it looked like Arizona State was going to run away with this game and make Oregon drop way farther than the rankings and probably show why they shouldn't have been ranked in the top 10. But then Oregon cut it to 24-21, just a span of a few minutes. From 8.42 to 5.24, they cut it to 24.21. It looked like Oregon might come out with a last-second victory way out in the desert. But then Jaden Daniels connected with Brandon Ayuk for an 81-yard touchdown. That was the dagger, and Oregon is done. Oregon is done. They are no longer college football playoff contenders. They have clinched a spot in the Pac-12 championship game. They did that last week with the win over Arizona. But even if they beat Utah, who we presume will come out of the South, Oregon cannot make the college football playoff. They have two losses now, one to Auburn, now one to Arizona State. A horrible, heartbreaking loss for the Ducks. Another signature win for Herm Edwards and the Sun Devils. We saw later on, early actually, in the afternoon on Saturday, another big game that I think many thought was closer than people thought it was going to be. Closer than expected. Number two, Ohio State, defeating number eight, Penn State, 28-17 to in Columbus. And this score, once again, kind of like Oregon here, give credit to Penn State for not giving up and for battling the entire 60 minutes. Penn State found themselves down 21 to nothing early in the third quarter. And every pregame show that was there, college game day, the Big Ten pregame show, the Big Noon kickoff for Fox, whatever you want to call it, all those guys had Ohio State winning by at least, at least three touchdowns. 
So 21 points or more. Keep in mind the spread in Vegas was 18 and a half in favor of Ohio State. So Penn State down 21 to nothing could have turned in the towel said we are done. But they got a couple quick turnovers and before you know it Penn State found themselves down 21 to 17. 21 to nothing to 21 to 17. So once again, give credit to James Franklin and Penn State for believing and fighting all the way back and trying to win this game in Columbus. But the downfall for Penn State was they could not stop the run. One of the better run defenses in the entire country allowed J.K. Dobbins to run for 157 yards and two touchdowns. Justin Fields picked up a couple crucial third down conversions with his legs, and despite the turnovers that Penn State was able to force, despite coming back down 21 to nothing and making it a game, the Nittany Lions just could not get the job done defensively. Also doesn't hurt that Sean Clifford went out with an injury in that game. Ohio State wins 21 or 28 to 17, still college football playoff contenders without a doubt, but credit to Penn State for giving them a fight. Ohio State Obviously, a couple signs of weaknesses that were shown in this game. Got to take better care of the football. We had a big one down in Athens in a week that was very, very boring for the SEC. As many of the SEC teams had their tune-up games, Georgia and Texas A&M played in an absolute thriller in their first meeting as SEC conference opponents. Hard to believe that when A&M joined the SEC back in 2012, this is the first time that Georgia and the Aggies were meeting. Also the first time that Texas A&M was visiting Athens since 1980. But Georgia, the number four ranked team in the country, kept their playoff hopes alive by outlasting Texas A&M 19-13. Obviously a very sloppy game early on. A lot of heavy rain in that game kind of cleared up there towards the end. But Georgia turning in once again a strong defensive performance to make up for what has been, as of late, a lackluster offense. And in this 19-13 victory on Senior Day, I should add, it was not Jake Fromm, it was not DeAndre Swift that were players of the game or the player of the game. It was the kicker, Rodrigo Blankenship. And it only seemed fitting that on Senior Day, one of the best kickers in Georgia Bulldog history made four field goals, a career high, scoring 12 of the 19 points for the Bulldogs in this win over Texas A&M. Phenomenal, phenomenal kicker, phenomenal, phenomenal person. Done so much for this program and on his final game in Athens. Was the difference maker in this key win for the Bulldogs. A couple other quick notes, a couple other teams that maybe weren't as highly ranked or maybe weren't people weren't paying as big of attention to them in Week 13, but did impress me and were on our board for the top five biggest games. Baylor taking down Texas 24-10 to to once again show that the Longhorns are still not back. That loss was Texas's fifth, I believe now. Fifth loss for the Longhorns, and what a, what a horrible year for Texas, guys. A year that many thought they could win the Big 12. Many thought they could make the college football playoff. The loss to LSU, understandable. The loss to Oklahoma, understandable. Both very close losses for Texas. But then they lose to Iowa State. They lose to TCU. Now they've lost to Baylor 24-10. to Not very competitive at all in this game. Credit to Matt Rule and the Bears for bouncing back after that crushing, heartbreaking home defeat last week against Oklahoma. The Bears, currently sitting at number 14 in the playoff rankings, should rise after the chaos ahead of them and remain college football playoff contenders if they can get that win over Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. In Oklahoma, a team I should add that is not looking impressive and very well could lose to Baylor if they were to meet up again in the Big 12 championship game. The Sooners survived TCU 28-24 in a game that's similar to Ohio State. Oklahoma led 21-0 early in the second quarter. But after they got up, TCU outscored the Sooners 24-7 for the remaining of the, remainder of the game, including a 98-yard pick six later on at the end of the third quarter. Oklahoma, kind of like Ohio State in this scenario, their issue was taking care of the football. It sounds so easy, guys. It sounds, but it's extremely hard to do to not make mistakes. Ohio State made a few, came away with the win. Same here for Oklahoma, but they had three turnovers in this game. One of them, a very costly pick six that gave TCU momentum and kept them in this football game. So obviously a, a cause of concern here for Oklahoma. They should have lost last week to Baylor. They barely survived TCU uh, at home. A game that they were 18-point favorites in and probably should have won by a larger margin. 
They've got an interesting game against Oklahoma State coming out next week, and then Baylor in the Big 12 championship game. Oklahoma, guys, yes, they're playoff contenders, but if I'm the committee, I'm looking at a couple of these recent performances, and I put a couple question marks by their name. But to close out that game for Oklahoma, we mentioned the three turnovers that they had. The biggest turnover in the game came from TCU. Oklahoma forcing the lone turnover from the Horned Frogs with just a little under two minutes left, getting a clutch interception, running out the clock, winning the game 28-24 to in Norman. And then finally, to end on a sentimental note, Virginia Tech. That was one of our game of the weeks. That was one of our top five biggest games coming into week 13. And Virginia Tech in Bud Foster's last game as defensive coordinator at Lane Stadium, last game for the Hokies at home, shut out Pittsburgh in a game that had major ACC coastal implications. Shut out the Panthers 28 to nothing. This is the first time that Virginia Tech has had back-to-back shutouts since 2005, and they have held their opponent's scoreless for nine straight quarters. So what a job well done by Bud Foster. What a great way to end his career at Lane Stadium. Of course, still has uh, a game against Virginia coming up. Maybe has a chance to shut down Trevor Lawrence and Clemson if they can beat the Cavaliers and then face off against the Tigers in the ACC title game. And then, of course, their bowl game. So still a lot of work left to be done for the Hokies, but obviously a very great way for Bud Foster and the Hokies to end their senior night in his final career game uh, at Lane Stadium. So those are your biggest storylines coming out of Week 13. Once again, we said it was going to be a fairly uneventful week, but we saw an upset. Number six, top 10 team going down. We saw another top 10 team go down with Penn State. We knew either Ohio State or Penn State was going to lose. And then we saw SMU fall to Navy, of course, the only other top 25 team that fell in Week 13. So when it comes to major ranking shakeups, there aren't going to be that many. But even though there won't be that many shifts, this week gave us a lot of clarity when it comes to the college football playoff race. Georgia escaped from A&M, but it wasn't, wasn't pretty. Oklahoma escaped from TCU, but it wasn't pretty. LSU looked dominant, but it was just Arkansas. Ohio State beat Penn State, but had some flaws. You know, you look across the board here, guys. We're seeing these playoff contenders, and the playoff race is starting to take shape. A couple of contenders. Utah is now a legitimate contender. It's Utah bust for the Pac-12. So how will that look with the committee now, with a lower Oregon team in the Pac-12 championship game? So much work left to be done among these elite teams. you still got Baylor and Minnesota still in the mix. So a lot of work left to be done from these teams, a lot of work left from the committee over these next few weeks to make sure they put the correct four teams into the college football playoffs. So it wasn't the most eventful week, but it gave us a lot of clarity and was able to clear some things up going on into rivalry week, which of course is one of the best and biggest weeks in all of college football. Real quick before we conclude, we'll take a look at our big board here, looking at our records. You'll notice we don't have teams trending up or trending down. Uh, We're taking a break. Obviously, at the end of the season, we were running out of teams to put up there uh, before it got redundant, of course. So since it is the conclusion of the season, our teams trending up and trending down has also concluded. But we will be addressing many teams coming forward in rivalry week. We will be addressing our Heisman race, our Heisman watch, and of course, we'll have bowl game predictions, conference championship predictions, plenty of teams to discuss over these next few weeks. But as you can see, in week 13, we had a phenomenal week across the board, 80% or better, straight up and against the spread. A major, major bounce back week. So I hope those of you that signed up for expert picks didn't give up on us yet because we're not done and there's a lot of football left to be played. 29 and 7 straight up, 80.6% brings our overall to 366 and 111. So that's a 76.7% winning percentage. Round that up, that's 77%. Once again, all of you know that have watched this for a while, our benchmark is 76. That's what we've been the past few years. If you're that or better, it's a very, very good year. And it looks like, barring a horrible rivalry week, we're going to finish that mark or better again in 2019. So, very successful year here. Once again, the Gridiron Expert, based on our preseason predictions. Against the spread, an absolute crushing week for us. 8-2, 80%. Man, if just Oklahoma and SMU had shown up, it might have been an even better week. But we will gladly take 80%. Once again, congratulations to those of you that stuck with us and won big this weekend. Our overall 74, 57, and 1, 56.4% on the year, which 
is one of the better marks in the country. If you don't believe me, just go check it out. CBS Sports, Saturday Down South, ESPN, anywhere you look, it's one of the better marks out there. And we are extremely pleased with it. But like we said, we're not done yet. We got a lot of football left to be played. A lot of analysis left to come your way. We have got Week 14 Rivalry Week predictions coming out on Tuesday. We've got our Gridiron Expert Top 25 coming your way tomorrow night on Monday. We've got Game of the Week videos. We've got playoff live streams. We've got a lot coming your way, and you don't want to miss any bit of it. It's the final week of the regular season, and there's a lot of content coming. It's a huge week of college football, and you don't want to miss it. So, guys... Thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Once again, make sure to like this video and check out everything in the description below. Exclusive college football content, exclusive college football offers. What's not to like? You don't want to miss it. So check out everything in the description below. And once again, thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.